couple weeks ago, I got a call from this guy who knows that I'm always on the lookout for some cool projects. Oh, 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 oh. He sent me pictures of this coffee table. Now, to be honest, I really didn't want to do it at first. It was broken. The end was broken clear off and the legs were loose. It looked like weather had really taken a toll on the top surface. Open grain, gaping holes in the top. But as a favor to him, I took it off his hands. And boy, am I glad I did. Wait till you see what it looks like now. Welcome to Alley Picked. The first thing I wanted to do was power wash the table from top to bottom. Next step was to repair the support legs. While it is sturdy, there's two spots where the legs are loose. Whoever made this table connected the leg base to the top with what looks to me like rebar metal pieces. I decided to use some long lag screws. Next step on the agenda was to address the broken piece. I need to get some wood glue on every part of the surface of both adjoining parts. I clamped it as good as possible, but the joint is not perfect or seamless on the top. It won't be a big deal in this case since I'm planning to fill all the gaps and open grain with an epoxy. I'm not sure what type of wood this is. What's your guess? After I sanded it, it pretty much stayed this reddish color. Now my first guess was redwood, but the little that I know about redwood, it looks more like a reddish pine. This does not look at all like pine, so let me hear your ideas. And now for the fun part of this project. Up till now, it's really been a lot of work. I've had to strengthen the legs, repair the part that broke off over there, and now I'm gonna do some epoxy. I decided that I was gonna fill the large gaps like right here and all the grain with some epoxy, pouring epoxy, but I wanted to use a color. I've got these mica powders and I've chosen this one, Vivid Blue. I'm gonna mix that with the epoxy I'm going to put it on really thin to fill all of the gaps in grain and then I'm going to sand it down and I'm hoping it's going to look like lakes and rivers with beautiful grains of wood showing through. At least that's the way I envision it. Let's see how it turns out. Whenever using a pouring epoxy, it's really a guessing game as to how much you're going to need. The more experience you have, the better guesser you are. I'm using a 50-50 mix of epoxy resin and hardener. I'm not sure how much mica powder to use either. I guess when the color looks like what you want, that's enough. Stir thoroughly for at least two minutes. Here's where I made a mistake. See if you can catch it. I'm filling the entire crevice with the blue epoxy. What I should have done is pre-filled a majority of the opening with some caulk. Then fill about a quarter inch from the top with the epoxy. There's two reasons for this. Number one, I wouldn't have wasted so much expensive epoxy. And number two, the gaps on the top are gonna bleed through the underside. Some of the epoxy started dripping through and I had to plug up the holes. Live and learn. I'm gonna let the blue epoxy dry overnight. Tomorrow, I'm gonna sand the entire surface. I'm hoping to end up with a beautiful combination of wood and blue grain. Here's something that I anticipated, but I hoped wouldn't happen. I was hoping that the epoxy would sand off easily. It didn't. So I grabbed my hand planer, which worked much better, but I had to really be careful not to gouge any parts too deeply in one spot. I had to do lots and lots more sanding. Now I wanted to see what the wood is gonna look like with almost no finish. So I grabbed the lightest wood stain I own, a natural color. Well, you might ask, why use any stain at all if you're just going to end up with a natural color? Why not just use the natural color of the wood itself? While the natural stain doesn't have any pigment colors, it does have oils which are going to seep into the wood and help treat, preserve, and highlight the natural color of the wood. This really sucked up a lot of wood stain. I used all the light colors I had, over two quarts. 
beautiful, rich-looking grain. Would you look at that? Yeah, Would you just look at it? Yeah, it's sad. It's the only market. Uh, I mean, just car. look at it. Yeah. I mean, just get a look at that. After staining the legs, I decided to use some triple thick water-based polyurethane for the finished. That was a mistake. Are you that dumb? Yes, I am, because after it dried, it kept the milky white finish and it looked horrible. I had to attack it with a stiff wire brush and remove the whiteness before applying some regular oil-based poly. Now comes the best part of the project, pouring the clear epoxy over the top. Very satisfying. It may not have been the best choice to do this outside, but the weather forecast is mild, warm, and no rain. I'm using a heat gun to break up any small bubbles that form in the epoxy. I'll do this periodically for up to about the first 30 minutes. It takes overnight to harden and then several days to a week to fully cure. Are you ready to see the final product? I did learn a lot on this project. Number one. Don't use triple thick polyurethane until you first test it on a small surface. Number two, fill the void so you don't waste so much epoxy. But overall, I'm extremely pleased with the way it turned out. Finally, here's what it looks like in the living room of a log cabin. 